اسحاب سعاده حضور الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته the audience uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen partners and stakeholders welcome to the last session before lunch uh, it's a challenging session usually before and uh, right and before and after the lunch you either feel sleepy or you're hungry but i assure this is going to be uh, a session you wished it continued longer uh, yesterday we had some lively sessions uh, that were largely centered around uh, broad based topics whether they were uh, about doing business in the GCC, energy transition goals, health and retail. But this session is about an overarching niche, or the mother of all industrial niches, as I would like to call it. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but uh, in my opinion, manufacturing uh, could be the best way to drive uh, and advance non-oil economies and cut down too much dependence on a single resource, uh, which can otherwise be uh, very risky. Uh, why I say that? Simple. Uh, because it brings reliability to an economy. You create jobs, uh, attract investment, drive innovation, and even contribute to uh, sustainability. So today we'll be talking about uh, manufacturing, a key element in uh, the region's non-oil economic growth vision. But it's not just any manufacturing. It's Industry 4.0. In case some of you are wondering what the 4.0 in the name uh, stands for, just as I was when I was researching my topic, it represents the fourth industrial revolution in manufacturing. From the first industrial revolution, which uh, saw the advent of uh, steam engines to mass production and assembly lines using electricity in the second, and computers and automation in the third, we are now living and experiencing the fourth industrial revolution which will take what was started in the third and enhance it with smart autonomous systems fueled by data, AI, and ML. And the GCC in particular has been keen in deploying technology uh, to enhance its manufacturing capabilities and drive sustainable growth. In fact, manufacturing is becoming one of the more high-tech industries in the region and the key to diversifying its non-oil economies. And that is evident from the fact uh, that the GCC member states have dedicated entire divisions to advanced manufacturing. And in the case of the UAE, there's a whole ministry for it. And yesterday, His Excellency Bandar al Khurayi of Saudi Arabia's uh, Minister of Industry and Mineral Resources rightfully uh, highlighted advanced manufacturing um, in his panel discussion. In April last year, uh, His Excellency launched the Saudi Advanced Manufacturing Hub, or the AM Hub and also expressed the desire for KSA to become a leader in additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing. Two months later, in June, Qatar launched its own AMP hub. Now, now let me tell you that these AMP hubs are one of the 14 uh, globally. Then we have the UE's Industry 4.0 initiative, which is in fact the region's first, uh, led by the Ministry of Industry and Advanced Technology. That's the ministry that I just mentioned referred to, which aims to increase national manufacturing productivity by 30% and increase GDP by uh, $7 billion by about 2013-31. So we see the seriousness uh, in the region to advance manufacturing. Uh, this also opens doors for opportunities for partners from around the world, and especially France. Now, to discuss this further in a very short time frame, we have with us our panelists. I'm just going to uh, state their names and companies and give them about two two to three minutes each, to tell us what the companies do so that you all know uh, before I ask them questions. So uh, from my left is engineer Abdullah al Khan, uh, CEO of Ubey Khan Group. Uh, next to him is uh, Alice uh, Gainek, the Chief Digital and Information Officer of SAR, and uh, Paul Gyomo, the CEO of uh, Spare Parts 3D. Welcome. Uh, engineer Abdullah, if you could start with your uh, introduction, please. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, in two minutes, I would like to introduce my company. We are a 40 years old company, a manufacturing industrial company. We have 20 factories, $1.6 billion assets. We are operating in glass, paper, plastic, and packaging. We uh, uh, export 60% out of Saudi. We operate in more than, or we sell more than 19, almost 90 uh, countries. We have uh, more than 16 offices in the, across the region and Europe. Uh, we decided five, seven years ago to convert or to think without box to create 
uh, new business from digital and digital economy. What we did, we create productivity platform, innovation platform in the top of factory, like what Tesla did, mobility platform and four wheels. We do productivity platform and top of factory. Today, we create 20 startup, 20 team, corporate venture capital. We, so we create 20 platform to solve 20 pain in our own operation. Our strategy is very simple. We, say we, we solve our own problem. We celebrate for success, money, productivity. After that, we offer it to our customer and to the world. Today, we are in a global level. We have three, four platform uh, launched in Europe and global level, and the rest coming. Uh, we become today a software company, and we successfully bridge the transformation from industrial company to be a software company. And uh, we believe we create digital assets on top of our physical assets, means we monetize all the vertical, deep vertical knowledge we built last 20, 40 years to, to have it in a platform and scale it globally. And this is relevant for every one of you. If you have a deep vertical, and if you have deep knowledge of any business, you can do similar. Thank you. Alice. Okay, what about Thor? Uh, Thor is a French company. It's a pure player in water. And I have the honor to say that next week, we will celebrate the 90 years of the company. Nine zero. So it's Happy a birthday. great pleasure to be there today. And uh, it's a 2 billion euro company with uh, 30,000 employees. And we are serving around 20 million euro consumers across the, the globe. Historically, with GTC, we, we have a, a strong story with GCC, uh, with strong contracts. Our international HQ headquarter is in Dubai to give you the importance of GCC uh, in the group strategy. Uh, we have big contracts. Uh, two of them are uh, in Me with Medina region in, uh, in Saudi, and the second in Dammam in Saudi as well. And um, we serve 9 million consumers in Saudi, not far from half of the group, just to give you the importance of GCC for, for SOAR. Uh, and we have the ambition to become what we call the champion of water transition as we talk about ecology transition. Uh, climate transition. Now we are, cl uh, we are talking about water transition. And what does it mean? Water transition is to say now we have a problem with water. It's across the globe, we'll have a problem. Our ambition is to be the leader on water to preserve the resource. And for that, we will have to... So we are talking about sustainability. Uh, and, and we have committed ourselves as a group on financial uh, aspect to reduce the consumption of water across the globe by 10%, I would say. And for that, we have two pillars. Of course, the first one is CSR and sustainability uh, strategy. And the second one is digital. And here we will come to industry uh, 4.0. Paul. Right. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so I'm, I'm CEO of Spare Part 3D, a much younger company than those two that, uh, that got presented. Um, we are a startup, French startup, based out of France and Singapore, actually. And uh, we happen to operate pretty much 70% of our business right now in the JCC. Um, we support, we provide, we are a software company, and we provide software to help uh, industrials, and mostly heavy industries, to digitize the inventories of spare parts so that they can be then produced locally using 3D printing. Our objective being uh, enabling the uh, to taking off the uh, big loads of, of uh, spare parts that are um, in, the, in, the, um, in the balance sheet that are costing a lot to the companies and, and basically digitize by digitizing the process. So we, we offer um, several solutions throughout our, our, our software. Uh, mainly two things. Uh, one is identification of spare parts that can be printed and that makes sense to be digitized and then printed. So question of what, what, what should I do and, and being able to value at stake 
what, what should be uh, the return on investment of those digitization. That's the first thing. The second thing is helping the digitization itself. And uh, we often talk about digitization as a big word. When we are talking about digital inventory, we are talking about having all the means to be able to reproduce a part locally with a given supplier. So providing flexibility for, for in terms of the supply chain, providing the resilience, um, and providing localization. So that, that's what basically we do. And again, uh, operating in Oman, Qatar, and uh, we just started last week, uh, in both uh, in Saudi and uh, UAE, to operate. Great, yeah, heavily entrenched in the GCC, I see both companies. Uh, uh, so we'll be having two rounds of questions, and uh, maybe we could open the floor for questions and answers after this, if we have time. And uh, so let me start off with you, uh, Engineer Abdullah. The Ubekan Group is uh, deeply involved with the Saudi AM Hub, uh, a key catalyst, as we know, for upgrading the kingdom's uh, industrial ecosystem. Uh, just briefly, uh, what are some highlights of the group's initiatives in smart manufacturing, and how does that help the group's vision in the grand scheme of things? And maybe you could also give us an overview of how Industry 4.0 is actually transforming the manufacturing landscape in the case, with some case studies and examples so that we can... Many businessmen believe uh, digital transformation or 4.0, it's incremental productivity. And this is, I think, they are missing the point. The, the, the 4.0, it's a game changer. It's a disrupting the cost structure, how you operate a factory since Henry Ford invented the factory model. Today, a structure of cost to have, to connect your assets, to automate and digitalize your process, to integrate the cost and the competency and the people and the man and machine and methods and material together, you will create totally different productivity game. Means you will win in the market. It's not a matter of luxury to have a command center or have uh, nice figures and have uh, things in your mobile. No, this is a matter of cost. If I produce this in one euro, I can produce it in 80 cents. And I can pass this the productivity, half of it, to my customer, and I can, win, I can win more market share. And this is what happened in my company. I grow last three years, 20 plus. I improved 10 point my margin, and we have almost uh, zero defect. We reduce 99% of our customer complaint, and we reduce also 98% of our customer complaint cost. This is a game changer. This is not inc incremental. But we have, we learned a lot last seven years, and we build our own strategy and methodology to transform. First, we say, we repeat, like almost every day, get organized. If you don't understand your vertical deep, don't try to transform. Because if you transform, you will fail faster. But if you organize yourself, regardless what's your industry, is it water or a, a medical or a supply chain or manufacturing? You need to go deep to understand your domain and vertical. Today, the game, it's a vertical game, not anymore technology game. I heard today and yesterday AI, AI, AI. And yesterday was in station F talking about AI. I can tell you, AI to become more and more commodity, like sending email and, and uh, an Excel sheet. Today, don't build your capability in AI. Build capability in your understanding of vertical. Get connect, uh, get organized and get connect. After that, with the expertise, you can get inside and kind of build AI. Today, the big, big boys, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, they are commoditized AI, become like sending email. And this is very important. And this is valid just 12 months ago, 24 months ago. Maybe five years, you need same capability like MIT PhD holder for data scientist. Today you don't need that. We, I have 3,000 employees. I train, as we speak, 300 people for, to be data scientists. And they create in the shop floor. They are a shop floor worker. And they are creating their use case. And they become predictive. They, become, they go inside. They become smarter, cheaper, faster, deeper. All this done by a shop floor guy. But you need to move from a project base to a platform base. You can scale. Don't deal with uh, AI as a project. Deal with it as a part of daily activities. And this is the m small mistake or big mistakes. Many corporate, they are creating a lot of initiatives as a project. 
If you don't have it within a platform, highly integrated, you can scale it, you can repeat, you can uh, accumulate knowledge, you will, I think, uh, miss big point. We have a factory almost double our capacity with same asset and with less people. And we start to offer a price, even B2B, uh, in, uh, in very attractive price, very competitive price, because we're eliminating uh, a lot of waste, wasting people. I can tell you, most of the manufacturers, 50% doing the business and 50% supporting the business by collecting data, validating data, analytic data, politicize the data, urbanize the data, and this is a big challenge. If you eliminate this, you reduce the 50 percent supporting the business, maybe to 10 or 15, you can win more in the market. And I believe, personally, uh, this is it's a must to survive. Like you are moving with, uh, competing with somebody have steam or somebody have, uh, I mean, electricity, but multiply 10x. And, and this is, I think, the, the, the main point. We need to understand the vertical. We need to connect our asset process system, uh, customers, suppliers, materials, and after that we get inside. Stop to talk about AI and BI, because if you are not really organized and connect, it's you are wasting your time in the transformation. Great, yeah. So I see productivity and upskilling is, is part of uh, the many uh, factors there, and uh, um, we're going to elaborate on that further. At least uh, now, of course, uh, like I said, uh, Industry 4.0, offers huge possibilities, but that also means that not one company or not one country can do it alone. Uh, and, and you, of course, need partnerships and collaborations which, which play a key sig significant role in, in driving the adoption of implementation of uh, Industry 4.0 solutions. Can you walk us through uh, some of the success stories of your collaboration with industry leaders? And no. uh, I know uh, Al Khan Group is uh, one of them. Yeah, SOAR has a, a, a strong culture of uh, collaboration and partnership, and in many contracts we are partnering with uh, Saudi partners, uh, the GCC partners. But le le let's talk about uh, a great story. Um, as, as I said, SOAR, um, SOAR mission is to be water transition champion, and one of the key elements is digital. So. I just want to point out one figure is 3 billion euro is the total perspective of smart water market. It means the, 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 the opportunity of selling digital solution on the market on water sector only is 3 billion. Globally. Yeah. So and we, as so we have the ambition to be one of the digital leaders on the market. It means becoming one smart water player on the market. So for that, we have worked a lot uh, inside SOAR to build digital solutions that are ready to be uh, proposed to other actors on the market with the purpose, of course, still the, the sustainability strategy in mind to preserve the water resource and what we the, the exact purpose is to provide to water its value back. So it's really about sustainability and water preservation. And for that, as we have a culture of partnership, we have tried to find complementarity with partners. And we shared some common ideas with a company that is called Obecan. And why are, are we uh, really complementary? First, because Obecan comes from manufacturing. A strong experience on operational excellence, on uh, smart operation, on lean management, that is really strong. And uh, the company, and uh, Abdallah, has created a, a, a vision of manufacturing that is really strong with digital solution to support this ambition. Uh, SOAR is a pure player in water with a strong expertise in water and having in, uh, together uh, the water expertise plus the operational excellence of manufacturing brings a champion that we strongly believe will be the smart water champion, creating a vertical of smart operation coming from Obecan into water. So we strongly believe that we have to 
good couple to be the digital leader on the market. Great, I see that efficiency is going to be one of those uh, highlights of yep. uh, how you function, and uh, we're going to come to that later. Uh, Paul, manufacturing and 3D printing, you know, kind of seem synonymous these days. You know, people say that we can manufacture in 3D. I, I would like to ask, ask you, you, your company being a pioneer in additive manufacturing, what role do you see 3D printing and related technologies playing in revolutionizing manufacturing? And how can that contribute to the overall development goals of the GCC? especially when you talk about localization initiatives. I know the GC is, is, is pretty obsessed with the localization, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah you mentioned earlier uh, in your introduction that one of the objectives is to transition from selling oil to manufacturing locally. Um, and uh, what we see is that a lot of the initiative are, can be done around the fact that the, through the energy industry especially, there are a lot of purchases that come from, from outside, especially the equipment, or all the assets to be able to build those, those factories. Uh, a lot of them come from, from external uh, countries, even external to JCC. So um, when we are looking at, uh, um, for our customers in, in, in the energy sector, gas turbines, uh, pumps, valves, and so on, um, this is a lot of, of, of things that are purchased from Europe, from, from the US. Um, uh, a lot of the initiative for localization uh, comes either to get some of these main OEMs, uh, original equipment manufacturers, to come and, and build uh, a JV or a big plant um, in your country. Um, this is very, very well working and, uh, and, uh, and obviously need to be pushed further. What we see as an opportunity through Industry 4.0 and, and, uh, and uh, again, additive manufacturing as being a mean to be able to produce locally on small volumes, um, combined with digitization. So I mentioned about spare parts. Spare parts, there is a huge, a very, very interesting use case on the fact that we are talking about small, small, small volumes, high quantity or variety of, of components, and you, it is very, very difficult to predict when you need them, uh, so you need to stock a lot. Um, consequently, as I mentioned, a company like a major oil and gas company will have several billion dollars of inventory sitting there, with most of it never being used over the lifetime of the asset. Um, so, digitizing um, and combining these different uh, industrial uh, in, in industry 4.0 solutions like digitization and um, and additive manufacturing can enable to have a, 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 a digital library of those components um, shared IP eventually with with the OEMs that comes from that, that that can get royalties on the production, but they will not have the burden to produce in the U.S. and then ship the parts. And you will have the ability to produce locally your components only only when you need it, and having a full digital inventory. So that, that's that's uh, we see that as a real opportunity in terms of of the application of additive manufacturing um, to localization and to support local manufacturing in uh, in the JCC and to support this transition of, of creating more plants. And, and, and one of the examples that we've seen uh, in Oman is uh, we started uh, about two years ago working with uh, the national oil company, uh, PDO, and this is a public case study so I can share about it. Um, and we've done a due diligence uh, through our identification product on what are the parts that make sense to be produced and what one that, that we should produce. And the outcome of that is, okay, there are several uh, dozens of millions, if not hundreds of millions that we could save per year. Uh, but it requires to uh, locate production. It means we, we need to create shops. Uh, we need to get investors coming in and buy 3D printers and, and start being able to produce locally in parallel to the digitization work that we need to do. Um, so right now, we are supporting them in providing insights, uh, and that relates to, to what uh, Engineer Abdallah was saying earlier. Um, when you know well uh, as a, your, your business, you, you can leverage the data and data insights as, as very valuable business models. Um, we have a very clarity onto the terms of technology that are needed to be installed in Oman to be able to support the on-demand production of spare parts and this localization of spare parts. So that's, that's, uh, that's a use case that we want to replicate in different countries uh, within the JCC and that we think is, uh, is quite valuable uh, to support localization of, of manufacturing. Great, if, uh, this is a good first round. I'm sure you wouldn't agree. Uh, so like I said, uh, the Industry 4.0 is uh, interlinkages. There are many assets and many facets to it. 
uh, and the key challenges that Industry 4.0 aims to address, such as optimization of processes, increasing productivity, improving sustainability, localization, reducing emissions, uh, collaboration, creating employment, amongst the long list of challenges that it aims to address. I'm going to now take the liberty to ask each one of you speakers your view on just one facet. Uh, and Jinnah Abdullah, starting with you. Uh, can Industry 4.0 improve productivity? I know you've uh, said that, but share with us the experiences that you have created at uh, Urbea Khan Group in this regard. In the old days, we are using 5, 10, 20 parameters. And also, we are touching the surface of data. Today, we have 1,200 equipment in my company, 280 production line have been connected Every production line and equipment have something called BLC, Program Logic Control. Every BLC have 10 to 20,000 parameters. Every parameters we can decode it and classify it from uh, maintenance, uh, quality, production, and safety. With this decoding for 10 to 20,000 parameters, you start to create something called digital thread. With digital thread, you start to do uh, digital twin. With digital twin, you start to predict. If you start to predict the process and the machine behavior, you start to avoid any failure. You start to eliminate defect of quality and unplanned maintenance. And this is money. With this, you can increase the OE overall equipment efficiency 30, 40, 50, 70 percent. Because you start to have clear uh, cause and effect, start to have real visualization start to have actionability, start to have a easy barito of cost and uh, critical. You start to connect um, the, the ERB to the, the dictionary cost of the operation, the ERB with the BLC, with the supply chain, with all circle, and you try to translate any losses to a money. And every operators, every shift, they can understand how much they gain or they lose. With this, I'm real time, with this, you start to see huge improvement. In the old days, if you are a good company, you understand your cost one month later. If you are an average company, maybe one year later. And now, if you have it in the shift, per machine, per product, per process, per, uh, and you start to engage people because you empower them from zero to hero, from uh, a simple operators running around the machine, he is half limit of knowledge and capability to become uh, a really a, a super operator to go deep, understand, become entrepreneurs, become sell, become autonomous. I start, we start to see, and we have benchmark globally. We are part of an uh, association called IBG, International Packaging Group, and we benchmark with more than 30 companies globally. And uh, this uh, benchmark, it's a uh, life connected with Heidelberg machine and all the printing supplier machine, because this club have a supplier with us. We are double of productivity in global now in some certain process. Not because we are smart, because we start to get inside the machine. Plus also, we start to understand the machine more than the machine manufacturer. Because my machine manufacturer, he understand technology. We understand the process. After a start, we start to get in, inside the machine, we start to have merge between technology and process. And we start to reverse engineer and challenge the manufacturer. And we start to give them feedback about their design, their performance, their machine, their reliability. With this, you become a real partner, not just a consumer. And with this merge, you can create digital twin. With digital twin, you can train AI. With the training of AI, you can put it in a marketplace of Microsoft or uh, Google, or, and you start to sell it. If you have a plant of water treatment plant, you can create digital twin for all the plant. And you can train the AI for one or two years. After that, you can offer it to every water treatment plant globally. And you can have subscription and become a software company. And this is valid for every industry and everybody know and have a deep knowledge and vertical. And this is what they call a digital economy or knowledge economy. To create physical assets on top of your uh, digital assets on top of your digital assets, uh, physical assets. And uh, I think if you don't create fear inside your organization, this fear, let people move fast. Create fear for your board. Create fear for uh, your uh, executive. 
create fear because they told him you will bankrupt. And it's true. I mean, I'm, I'm not, uh, I mean, try to create fear now, huh? but this is the reality. Because you will go with a team, they have different tools to the market. You have a stick in wood, they have a laser gun. And you, you know the game, who's winning? If you have a, uh, your soldiers have a laser gun and the other team have, a, or other camp have a, a stake in wood. And this will happen. And now it's happened. It's getting more and more. And uh, if you don't really get organized, get connect, get inside, get optimized, merge all this and start small, scale fast and learn. Don't give up. Don't, uh, because you are an adventure, you are a blue ocean. And this is really the, the leadership we need and, and to create really fear and, and, and to create a drive. You spoke like a true leader, Zina uh, Abdullah. Um, Alice, uh, we want to know more about efficiency. Yeah, uh, I, I, I said Industry 4.0 is not a technology topic, it's, it's about organization, about being connected. So we have to go back to water business. What is water business? Finally, our business is very simple. We are monitoring infrastructure of water with the objective that it runs correctly, like you finally with your machines, the same. Uh, but we are managing 30,000 installations, millions of assets across the geographies, across the globe. So we can't, we, uh, there are two ways. Either we put people everywhere, but huge uh, amount of people, or as uh, uh, General Abdallah said, we connect. And that's where uh, digital come. If we connect all uh, our assets and we have millions of data coming from our assets every day, then we can start industry 4.0. And so in the past uh, three years, we have become now a data-centric company and all the assets are communicating with a central database. And now we, ca we have been organized, connected, and now we can optimize. And optimize is, uh, as I said, putting uh, intelligence, putting uh, tools to automate, to uh, industrialize, to optimize the operation, Start, starting to become more reactive in real time, detect what happens and react. But the objective is not to stay at reactive mode. It's to become more proactive. First, what will happen in a few hours, few days, and predictive. How I have to think my infrastructure in the coming months or years to be more predictable and to anticipate things. So that's uh, our aim. And let's give you some very concrete example. What does it mean for us? First, as our purpose is sustainability, the first is to fight against leaks on the network. We have millions of kilometers of networks. So the first challenge is to use data coming from all the sensors on the network to first to detect leaks, and tomorrow, or we have started fortunately in SOAR, to anticipate where the will, will be the leaks to be able to repair before there is a leak. And the objective for us is to say, OK, we have detected in real time. Now we are able to predict where the, the leaks will take place. And the next step will be how to think differently the network to avoid the potentiality of the leaks. So this is the more strategic way of building new networks. So that's for networks. We are working the same way on, um, on work, working on how to change consumer behavior. Real time, A, consumer, you're consuming a little bit too much today. Reacting in real time to change the behavior of the consumer. But we, the aim again is to become from reactive to proactive. Hey, guys, if you don't react and don't reduce the consumption in one day or two days, we will have globally a problem with water scarcity. 
And the objective is, of course, to be more strategic, to try to coach people to consume and to optimize the way they consume water for individuals and, of course, for industries. So we have this kind of first reactive to proactive and then predictive for all the topics we are managing. As I said, leaks, as I said, consumer behavior, plant or facilities optimization to become more efficient, energy savings, all the topics in water sector, we will work on uh, this way of first real time with connected device, then proactive and then predictive. Okay, technical yet not too technical, so a person like me can understand it. And uh, from technical to technology, and you know, technology is advancing at a very great speed. That means that we, the users, have to catch up with that speed. That means upskilling, that means reskilling. Uh, Paul, upskilling is a big challenge, especially uh, in, in, in the new niches that are being created every day. What is your take on that, and how do you, uh, your company, deal with that? Um, yeah, uh, being in niche market um, in uh, around technologies that are not deployed broadly yet, um, getting to to deploy technologies is a challenge, and getting to to know to get the people to operate it is a challenge. Um, uh, typically for us, um, again, it's not a challenge of my company, but uh, if I take back my example of of uh, in Oman, uh, when we get to the point where now we need to set production centers. Uh, let's say that that doesn't happen overnight on new technologies, um, on, on new operational workflows. So um, a lot of, of the, the things go through collaboration models and transfer of technology models. Um, we, we mentioned about that a little bit earlier. Um, and, and go get the, the, the expertise uh, wherever it sits. Uh, so what we see in Oman is it, it comes from a, a lot from Europe, especially Italy, um, to provide some of the expertise with contract of technology transfer to train and get a, a local partner to, to be able to deploy and scale afterwards. Uh, because anyway, in the end, you need to have a local partner that's going to be operating. Um, but, but the transition can be a bit tough. Um, I, I wanted to, to, add, to jump on, 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 on the topic of, of performance uh, and just to add up a little bit on, sure, on, yeah. on, on what uh, both panelists have, have been saying. Um, uh, to be able to improve processes, uh, you need to have data points, and it starts with collecting data. Um, uh, in the same way for, for uh, in, in a lot of, of, of business streams, and um, just for us, uh, looking at um, being able to know uh, what the part we should digitize, we have exactly the same problem statement, is how do I analyze a part, and what, how do I know whether a part is feasible for a given technology, and so on. And it starts with building a data lake of, of, of knowledge for different customers. Of course, you need to protect the IP, that, that's a given. Um, but, but creating this, this common knowledge is often a very, very first start. And because I know that uh, this customer um, is defining the requirement of a given van uh, valve in terms of temperature and operation uh, pressure uh, to this level, this is common knowledge that can become then used in a data lake and then leveraged through AI models to be able to become much faster in operation and become, become, become a, a scalable solution to be deployed to globally. Yeah? The, that's, uh, that's what I might take on performance. Okay. So we have a couple of minutes left. And uh, uh, how about a third round of questions? OK. How about a third round of questions? Now you have, we have two companies from outside the region, GC region, nevertheless very strong partners. And we have a company from in, inside. I want to know. Uh, randomly, that, or maybe start with you in general, Abdullah, is how are the companies in the region, not only Saudi Arabia, but in the region, of course you have uh, more exposure to, to uh, the, the, the industry, is, are they finding it hard to understand these new technologies? And what do you suggest they do? To be honest, B2B, very low globally to start real digital transformation. They are talking about something else and they claim it uh, digital transformation. Digital transformation is hard. This is the job of CEO. If CEO intellectually don't understand what's coming, what's the, his role, he cannot push it in his disk to a CIO or to CFO. This is all days gone to have a project to implement uh, SAB or an, an, and have committee and push it to the uh, CIO or uh, the chief technology officer and let him to do it. No. 
This is gun. If the CEO not adapt, understand, own, drive the digital transformation, don't start. It will not happen. Because you will touch every point in the company. And this is why we are, as Satya Nadilla mentioned many times, he said, we sign MOU with a big corporate, they celebrate. We told them, don't celebrate. We did, as a Microsoft, our job. You need to do your job. The challenge start on your side. What I like to say, CEO, the key. Intellectual, understand what's coming, what's the challenge, and his daily business to lead the digital transformation. Because it will change everything, the operator model, the value proposition, the competitiveness, the skills and competency, the, everything in the company will be changed. If you don't, the captain don't really take off and uh, lead the, the direction, uh, the, the passengers and the, uh, the uh, co-pilot, they will start to fight. Because there is uh, everybody has tried to, 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 to create uh, his own kingdom and his own way to operate. But this is very, very, very important. And we need to focus to lead with the CEO. But globally, the good news, B2B, we are 101. In the US, in emerging market, everywhere. I, because I live that, I deal with all the technology provider. And there is a big mix between technology and digital transformation. You can find hundreds of co companies great in digital, and they are very uh, enabler for us. We, we cannot move to digital without them. But they are hiding behind technology and label it in digital. If you don't have native cloud, multi-tenant, microservices, ABIs, all this in your offering, and also you have deep knowledge of every vertical, you have plug and play, reducing the complexity, increase the, the capability, uh, increase, uh, I mean, uh, the depth and, and analytics, this is, you can become a digital. But hard code, like what the old legacy, hard code, difficult to maneuver, no uh, microservices, no ABIs, no structure of right data. This is the old technology, this is the old camp. They are dying a matter of time if they don't adapt to the new with what Microsoft lead globally for inter enterprise. If there's one key, key takeaway, it's going to be leadership from this uh, panel. Uh, thank you, Engineer Abdullah. Elise, uh, what do you suggest, uh, advise com companies from France, let's say, coming to the GCC and the GCC companies that expect this partnership? What would you suggest to these? Uh, good question. Um, I, I think it's really important to understand the, the, way, the, the culture of, of GCC. So I think partnership with local company is key to understand the way business works in, uh, in GCC. So my advice would be don't think because you're a big French player you are the best on the market. So I think hum, hum, um, be humble. And uh, as any region in the world, in fact, you have to understand the culture, the way business works, and to, 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 to go the right way. And, and I think partnership is a, is a key uh, success factor for that. So be humble, maybe. Okay. Paul, both questions are yours. You can take both of them. <laughs> I will answer both then. No, um, uh, my, my take on the on the leadership is, um, uh, uh, yeah, di digital transformation, uh, integrating uh, new solutions in, in industrial companies is hard, and and we see that very much the change management uh, is, is difficult because it requires it, it's very often tr uh, transversal to a lot of organizations. Uh, it, it changed many aspects of the company, but it's also very transversal. So you need to have a lot of people aligned. That's, that's one of the reasons why, if it doesn't come from the CEO, it, it never happens. Uh, in my life of business, we, we, are, we need to, ch to, to, to be aligned with finance, supply, engineering, uh, at least, at the very least, if not, and procurement, obviously. So, so this, is, this is always a challenge, and, uh, and that's why it's, it's very good to have top-down approach uh, to be able to drive through, through transformation, to be frank. Great, so we touched based upon, oh yes, yes, Alice. Uh, maybe one compliment on the leadership. Uh, one KPI, because we love KPIs here, 
is the, 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 um, the position of digital in uh, organization. How close to the CEO is the digital organization? You have an indicator of the level of maturity of the, uh, of the CEO on the organization. Okay, so we touched base upon the human element with the leadership and the technological element. Of course, we didn't get very technical. And uh, let, let me tell you that this is just a glimpse of what is ho happening in the GCC. Uh, and I can assure that we're going to go, and uh, we're not going to stop until we realize our visions. Every country has its vision, the GCC, and uh, um, overall, inshallah, we're going to realize our visions. And uh, we have about five minutes, and um, I would like to open the floor to, uh, to uh, yeah, uh, if you could state your name, your company, and the country, and uh, just briefly and precisely ask a question who you're addressing. The, uh, I, uh, just let me give you the mic. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Turki and I'm the CEO for uh, the National Security Services Company, SAFE, which is totally owned by the BIF. My question is to Engineer Abdullah. I was impressed with the, the level of uh, understanding of the technicality, understanding of the game, and uh, that creates a problem. The problem from my side as a leadership, and I think the session is supposed to be related to leadership very strongly. How did you engage your organization to move with you in that direction? Because the challenge here is to engage with this level of an understanding, depth, of knowing the game, how did you engage the whole organization to move with you in that direction? Because this is a real challenge, and this and what you are talking about, the digital transformation, it cannot be done by an individual. It's supposed to be done by an entity who has been led by, I need to express this a great leader like you in that organization. So I would like to know that the recipe or the secret of that. There is the, it's a classical, process for change management. The bill shape 2060-20. Early adapter. You focus with the early adapter. Create lighthouse. Create a success story. Create early adapter. And even in my company, I'm 35 years in the company. Part of the founder, part of the owner, part of uh, CEO, I'm not afraid to be fired. And also I have struggle to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to change. 20% early adapter. If you Wait and see 60 years and they will move. The genius people, the 20 years and they know everything, everything negative, and those guys, you need to watch them out. They are the cancer of the organization because everything wrong, if they don't invent it themselves, if they don't understand it, 10 years normally they move, and 10 years you need to fire. And this is a classical change management. It's not really a, But you need to show really a lighthouse. Uh, example inside you need to celebrate money you need to celebrate uh, success gain in the market don't fluffy and i mean flashy things of uh, uh, digital control room and screen and visualization this doesn't help it's good but doesn't help help you remove waste you increase productivity you gain market share you increase your margin you increase your profit and i think uh, and also you need to engage me last five seven years Last 13 years, 14 years, first Operation Excellency for 10 years, and last five years, I'm focused on daily basis about the subject. The rest, I don't talk about it. I mean, somebody do it, but I believe if I put my house in order, I will win in the market. That's uh, change management one one for you guys. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mohamed Zabi, CEO of Marafiq. You, know, you don't know Marafiq, it's a utility company. We are uh, in the top list of Forbes 100 company in the Middle East, been announced yesterday. I will share with you my experience working with Rebekan and Sours and also in a way with Paul and his company. I'm, as a CEO, I'm struggling to transfer. I joined the company the last three years as CEO. I met uh, Abu Abdurrahman and different meeting, different subject, because I provide service to him. Bauer, as he complaining about. Disagreement meeting. Disagreement meeting. <laughs> and went to, I heard about his transformation, his company. I went to see it. You need, I think what he explained just little. You need to go there and see what real transformation. I see it in the, the front floor, all his plans. 
He transformed the company. He has all these 20. He closed the business financially, I think, daily, if not hours. We cannot do it. I, I need to learn from his experience. I think the way he said the vertical, the 4G, I did a pilot with uh, him to see in one of our plant, in water plant. We reduced the support, really, almost zero now. More our operator focus in operations, safety of the plant, supervisor have plenty of time, training, uh, develop themselves. Uh, I compliment them. I worked with SOAR. SOAR, they have a lot of applications. Knowing the business, the water, we have a partnership long time, and we have good relationship, and they have a lot of applications. Uh, I need to, uh, I'm proud now, one of the company, Albeca and O3, Model is being implemented by SOAR, adopted by SOAR in France. I think so I'll ask SOAR, SOAR maybe elaborate on this. Is really the, the first time I see soft company or application Saudi uh, built or and being applied in Europe and be abroad. I think also uh, the other question, uh, Engineer Abdullah, should light about the other software you have and Nauras and others will help transform the way you think about HR. You can build HR within, a, I think, one day you can have your HR system communicating with the government, communicating with the employees, competencies, you name it. Uh, I think we need a sessions about only what they did and the transfer. But if you elaborate more about the other uh, software you have, and Elias, if you can shed uh, light about the, how you implement the O3 in your company, much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, I so wish we could continue, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, can, I can give you a minute if you want to do it, yeah. Because I don't want to hold them back from lunch, right? Um, very uh, few words, I, I try to be synthetic, and we can uh, talk later. Um, as we said, the strength of our partnership is the complementarity of our solutions. We are coming with uh, connectivity, we are coming with uh, AI already, data, uh, data model, data dictionary, if I use a word, because if we don't talk the same language, dictionary is really important. So we are, we, everything exists in SOAR, all the water, solution already exists. What we have put with O3 is a management tool, finally, to reach operational excellence. So we have added this, uh, it's a management uh, tool, and we have defined or redefined or implemented into O3 the KPIs to, to, to manage water uh, business. And the interest of O3 is to provide this tool to all the, all the layers of the company, from the operator to the top management. So what we did is to implement these KPIs across the organization on both facilities and network to make sure the whole uh, water cycle was covered by the implementation. And with a small experimentation, we have been able to uh, save 10 to 11% to of the profitability. So on a small part. One of the, our key success factor with the uh, Marafaq and Sur, the leadership. Because Abu Saad, uh, Mohan Mohammed was involved and he understand, he drive this. Many, uh, many companies, we talk with the CEO, we discover all the change that run by a supervisor. And they create hundreds of reasons why it's a bad system, why it doesn't work, and they give you lectures about that. Because either capability or his own uh, agenda. Involvement of, uh, of a leadership like Abu Saad and Alisa for, for, uh, for, for change, this is why a key success factor. And we have 20 platforms. We have for enterprise management system, human capital, and, and we digitalize a lot of theory and uh, balance scorecard, digital line, KBIs, all this we already run in an engine. And we have security, safety, um, compliance, SG, um, spare part uh, platform. We have 22 
complete our autonomous enterprise concept. And with that, we bring this session to a close. Engineer Abdullah, Alice, Paul, thank you so much. And thank you, audience. Thank you.